sacrifice you made for all our sin and all our shame. You took the nail, you took our place. No one else can do what you have done. Your name is higher Your name is stronger Than any grave Than any throne Cry it takes all Savior of the world You're reigning now The Savior of the world Your name is higher Your name is strong
voice when I forget the voice that's holding back the waves. It was once the voice that told the skies to pour them into place. Let us join the endless song of everlasting praise. The only God who empties grace.
don't tell me that he's finished yet. Love you guys. Hey, Kalaheo Mish family and friends. Welcome to our Halipule service. Uh, today we have a special Halipule service because we're having an interview with our prison chaplain here at KCCC, Clayton Sui. If you want to tune in to the eight o'clock service today, Clayton is going to have the whole service and he's going to have testimonies from some of the uh, folks from the ministry. So I encourage you, jump over and check out that recording too. But today, we're going to come uh, talk story with Clayton, but let's open up in prayer first, yeah? Okay. Epule kako. Father God, thank you so much for this opportunity to gather together. And thank you for this opportunity to be able to talk story about um, the prison ministry here on Kauai. Father, I thank you that for 23 years now, uh, Clayton has responded to your call to be able to stand in the gap and be able to um, really minister in a very effective, consistent, anointed way. And Father, I pray that as we talk story today that people would catch uh, your heart for prison ministry here and they would see um, what literal practical needs we have. And I pray that they would be open to you speaking to them to help meet some of those needs. And Father, I pray for those that are giving uh, through electronic giving, giving through um, at, the, at the building, that you would continue, Father, to uh, meet their needs according to your riches and glory in Christ Jesus as they give obediently, faithfully, courageously, and sacrificially. And for the elders of our fellowship, I pray we would have godly wisdom and insight to know how to be able to invest your money in your way. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Well, prison ministry is something very close to my heart. Um, I think I got involved in prison ministry originally in 1979. I don't think you were born yet. Uh, <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. And so I've uh, been in prison ministry in one way, shape or form just about ever since. Actually, vocationally for about 11 years, I worked with prison fellowship, Chuck Colson. I was an area director, uh, regional director, became the national program director for all the national programming. And so in that role, I met Clayton in 2004, uh, came over to Kauai in 2004, 2005, did some uh, volunteer training for you guys right. over at Lihui Mish. And, um, you know, a lot of folks over the years, Clayton, I've noticed when I talk to them about prison ministry, I get a lot of varied responses. And one of the common responses is like, well, you know, you reap what you sow. These folks, they, they kind of made bad choices. They're reaping what they sow. They kind of deserve it. Maybe we'll pray for them, but hey, it's kind of on them. So share a little bit your heart for prison ministry, why you got involved and, and why you think maybe there's a biblical application for us to go deeper than just a casual prayer relationship with prisoners. All right. So <clears throat> when I first got involved with prison ministry at Kauai, it was kind of an outcry because I, I always kind of didn't want to be involved in prison ministries mm. myself because of that very reason. I, I came to Kauai um, in 1993, after we had gotten married, my wife and I, and I vowed this, this prayer, I said, I don't want to do prison ministry mm -hmm. because of the very reason. Yeah. I said, they deserve to be in prison. I don't want to, I don't want to work with prisoners. Um, I had just finished working in a mission in Honolulu, working with um, homeless people, and a lot of them were former prisoners. Mm -hmm. And um, I was like, I had, I had had enough. And so I said, I'm going to just stay out of Mercy Ministries, I was tired, I was burnt out. And I said, I don't want to do prison ministry. They deserve it. They deserve to be in prison. And um, God just softened my heart towards mm. prisoners. And he said, you know, you're going to do prison ministry. I was like, nope, I don't want to do it. And as he, as he softened my heart, he, in, uh, I, through uh, circumstances, I met uh, Pastor Jerry Tarui. And Jerry Tarui uh, invited me to come into um, KCCC one night to do a, a bi prison Bible study with him. And I said, oh, okay, I'll just check it out. I'll go down with you. And I went in with him. And the first night we went in, 
it was just like kid glove. You know, I just fit in with him. I fit in with the prisoners, and I just started talking to the prisoners. And Jerry said, "Clayton, you have a gift,、mm. and you you were able to just talk to these inmates in a way that they were able to relate to you.、Um, you talk their language, and they their ears perked up, and they they listen to you, and you have this keen sense of discernment." And he was just telling me all these things, and I was like. Wow, I didn't I didn't really realize that I had this、um, ability to speak to these inmates this way. And he says, I think you need to come back again. So I went back the next week, and you know how the story goes, right?、Mm-hmm. You just kind of、yeah. fall into it. And so, and I was back in like September, or August of nineteen ninety five, I think nineteen ninety. Sorry, nineteen ninety three. Sorry, nineteen ninety. I can't remember ninety seven, so that's how it kind of started,、mm. you know. And、um, we just we started with one Bible study at night, and then we ended up going more and more. And I they started to ask me to be the chap. Jerry asked me to be the chaplain and to go on a regular basis, and so it went to two Bible studies a week. And then I started going on the inside, and it just kind of、um, evolved from there, where I started to go regularly every week, every day during the week. Wow. Yeah. So you're the chaplain now at K Triple C. Yes. So that's a state、uh, position funded by the state, paid by the state. You're、no. a state employee. No. How does that work? Well, I'm recognized by the state, so I'm a state employee, but I don't get paid by the state、mm. because of the separation of church and state issues. So I'm funded by the churches、mm. on Kauai, mostly the missionary churches, because that's、uh, where I attend is Kalaheo Missionary Church, but.、Um, The, all the missionary churches have for twenty three years supported me financially,、wow. and of course private donors、um, also support me monthly. But、um, the state doesn't give me one dime. Okay. So it's it's more of a volunteer position at the jail, but the churches are the ones that are my backbone and support.、System. So really, it's a it's a missionary ministry. Yes, you're, it's a local local missionary. missionary. Yeah.、Mm-hmm. So biblically, what would be your motivation? Because you know, being in prison ministry myself. Uh, there's some incredible highs、right. because you see some amazing works of God, and there's devastating lows、yeah. because of the crash and burn.、Right. What what biblically motivates you to want to show up for 23 years? Right. So Matthew 25, right,、uh, 31 through the end of the chapter talks about I was in prison and you visited me. You know that vis that visited word really struck me.、Mm. You know I was doing some word studies and that word visited in the、uh, Greek is. Episkitomai, and that word episkitomai it comes from the idea of going with a purpose, with a with a drive, with a a personal vision to go with your own personal two eyes to really、mm. see how someone's doing、um, at a personal level, and、um, I, I I really wanted to do that as a ministry where、um, I brought personal. Uh, care to these inmates, and that they would know that they're loved, that、mm-hmm. they're cared for, <clears throat> that they're not forgotten. Because you know, when you go to jail, a lot of times you've burned all your bridges. Yeah, your family hates you. Your your sometimes your husband or your wife hates you. They don't want to have anything to do with you. So,、um, people have turned their back on you. So. It's good to know that somebody cares. Somebody still cares about you. Many times, the warden will say, "You know, nobody cares about you. Go talk to the chaplain. He's the only one who cares about you." And so these inmates are devastated. You、wow. know, and I mean, it's true. A lot of times, I'm the only one who would talk to them because nobody else wants to talk to them, and they're just they're at their lowest point in life. And so, I go there because of that. I go there also because, and that's. On the human level, but on the spiritual level, I do it because、um, God He commands us to do it. Go, go and visit them, or else we face eternal punishment,、mm-hmm. right? And so,、um, as a Christian, we're supposed to go. It's our mandate. You know, we need to go and, and visit people in the hospitals, go feed homeless people, and take care of those who are sick. And so, if we don't do it, he says we're going to sh- separate the sheep from the goats. And I, I've always wanted to be a sheep and not a goat because、yeah. I've been a goat all my life. <laughs> and so, I wanted to be a sheep. And so, I said, "Okay, God, I'm going to do this out of obedience." And Pastor Jerry taught me from the first time I went into the jail. We do this ministry strictly out of obedience,、mm. not because of the numbers.、Mm. Because if we do it out of、um, the numbers and the re- results, if we stay, if we think. We're going to do this to our numbers and number-oriented ministry. We're going to be a miserable failure、mm. because look at how many failures we've had over the years. But we celebrate the one victory and the little victories because of that. We、yeah. we, we strictly do it for obedience sake to God、yeah. and to His Word. And really, that's the heart of all ministry. Yeah,、right. I mean, 
if if we're being numbers driven or accolade driven or result driven, right. uh, we, we could all be sorely disappointed. Right. But obedience is better than sacrifice, right, right. and obedience is the best thing. And I I think you know. Like I always say, if I care when I get up there, I'll, I'll ask Jesus, right? <laughs> right, right? But I think maybe one of the reasons, because when you see there in Matthew 25, he could have listed a lot of things. And there's a few things that he did list, and, and uh, being a prisoner was one. Right. And I think because of the stigma right. from that culture way back then, right. all the way through our culture today, yeah. that stigma, Jesus had to put it in red right. and said, hey, you're coming to visit me. Right. And, and that helps us transcend, well, what did that person do? Right. Do they deserve my care? Do they deserve my right. concern? Do they deserve? Well, no, they don't. Of course. None of us do. That's what grace is. That's what grace is because we're going for Jesus' sake. Yeah. Right. And you know, like if we say, I'm doing this and this is grace and you should, you should thank me or you should mm -hmm. be thankful that I'm taking time out of my schedule to go and visit you. That's not grace, no. right? And so I always joke with the inmates, but they say, oh, you're such a good person to come and see us. You know, why do you do this job? You're such a good man. I'm like, trust me, <laughs> I'm not doing this because I'm a good person. Mm -hmm. I'm doing this because I need to do this. Yeah. Otherwise, where would I be? Yeah. You know? yeah. Well, let's talk some practice for okay. a few minutes here, because really, at the end of the day, you know, like James says, let's not just be hearers of the word. Let's be doers. Right. And let's just not talk about the significance of prison ministry mm -hmm. here on our island. We have a incarceration facility right and we have folks in there right first roughly i know it fluctuates uh daily even right. but roughly how many folks are incarcerated here on our island okay so on the average before covid hit uh we would average between 175 to 200 male and female male and female mixed mm -hmm. but they don't sleep in the same rooms of course right. and um i i'd say on a Good day we would probably be 175. On bad days we we clear 200. Yeah. Yeah. So there's a significant amount of people uh, for our small island right. there. Right. And so there's in prison programming that takes place of mm -hmm. uh, Bible studies, etc. I'm sure that's pretty radically um, altered right now with COVID. Do you right. have a lot of in prison opportunities right now with COVID? No, I'm the only one who mm -hmm. does um, ministry in the jail right now as far as religious services. Mm -hmm. uh, normally we have multiple uh, churches, multiple uh, faiths that come mm -hmm. in and I facilitate um, the different churches coming in. But because of COVID, I'm the only one allowed because we don't let any visitors come in at all. And um, even family members can't even come in for visits just wow. because of that. And it's wow. really frustrating for the, the jail because when families come in, the, the, the inmates' stress level goes down. But because of that uh, COVID um, um, regulations, we haven't been able to do that. Wow, that's brutal. And so then they really look forward yeah. to having church services. Yeah. In normal life, yes. you know, and Lord willing, we'll get back to some sense of that normal life. Right. Yeah, right. Um, teams go in. I, I know from personal experience, there's a training that needs to take place. There's state training. There's local training through your ministry. Right. And so when uh, you start training folks again, seeing light at the end of the tunnel, we can get the word out and people will be able to be trained to be able to go in on some of these teams and right. be a part of these Bible studies. Possibly. The, the thing is, we are a fool. Our, our volunteer mm, course, okay. uh, we have probably I have close to 65 volunteers that wow. come in and for a small facility that's packed. That's a lot. That's yeah. a lot. Yeah. So we have a good core group of volunteers. Mm -hmm. We have probably seven churches, uh, seven denominations of churches that are um, represented, different kinds of religions. Mm -hmm. And so uh, faithful volunteers, awesome. faithful, faithful volunteers. We have non-religious programs also like Narcotics Anonymous, Alcoholics Anonymous that come in also. So altogether, we have quite a few programs that run on a okay. normal basis. Okay. So we are very, very uh, fortunate to have a warden who is very open towards programs. Mm. Um, Unfortunately, we don't have any time slots that are available for new programs to come okay. in. So if other program, other people want to come in, they have to come in under an existing program. Mm. And then they would have to wait for a slot to open mm. up okay. in order to come in to start a new program. Okay. So it's going to be a, a while. We've, we've had a moratorium on any new programs for the last five years. Wow. Um, well, that, that's a testimony to your consistency of 20-some years. Right. Yeah. And the volunteers. Yeah. yeah the volunteers so, are faithful. So let's talk about... Uh, the needs that still are represented because having been in prison ministry, I know that you have sort of like on a, a church service, we have the Sunday morning church service, but 
there's choke things going on behind the scenes that are still valuable ministry. Right. So let's talk about first some of the needs that are still in prison, but aren't human resource needs, other kind of resources. What, what do you need right now in the prison that folks watching can be like, wow, I can help contribute to that? Okay, so the main, the main thing that we do need is um, we, we provide Bibles and um, journals and um, uh, reading materials like periodicals, like mm-hmm. Word for Today and Daily Bread and Upper Room. A war cry, all these different periodicals that inmates love to read, an inside journal from mm-hmm. Prison Fellowship. I work for Prison Fellowship, and so I'm the Kauai representative. And so we, we provide everything Prison Fellowship can provide, and um, we try to give it to the inmates on a regular basis. So to get these Bibles in and to get all these materials in, it costs money to bring it mm-hmm. in. So we need uh, donors to help us with the shipping. Most of these materials are free, but okay. the shipping is what we yeah. run into costs Especially and then storage island, right yeah. and then storage we're at the end of the food chain so start yeah. getting money to store it plus for the shipping it's it's a good hefty amount okay plus um what we always run into is um, inmates need to go to treatment for mm-hmm. drug treatment so getting them the assessments they usually assessment costs 175 dollars and then to get them to a neighbor island usually it's oahu maui or the big island because we have no uh, drug treatment facilities that are inpatient on okay. Kauai. so to get them to a neighbor island for that it's airfare and then the um, drug assessment fee and then a lot of times there's a three thousand uh, dollar mm. drug treatment cost that's a huge expense one one drug treatment charge for one inmate usually slaps our budget for the year wow and so our budget is really tiny so we we are very careful who we help with that money mm. it's very dear to us that we try to be careful also um, inmates when they um, pass away we have inmates that overdose we have inmates that have cancer and they die and so if we help someone with it with a funeral that's five five thousand to ten thousand dollars like that mm. and so that kills our budget for the year which mm. is what usually happens and if it happens in january from february to december we're, we're shot which right. is again what happens mm. and that's why we're short this year too okay. and so um you know it's it one one funeral one one person having cancer or one person overdosing could just ruin our budget right. for the year so the state doesn't cover that stuff it, it's it's up to the inmate and their family. family or friends, which a lot of them, like you said, burn their bridges. Right. So the body of Christ is able to step up right. and help stand in the gap for them. Right. And many times when I go to the pastors of our churches, they have stepped up in the past and they've mm-hmm. given a gift in kind mm-hmm. to help. But, you know, it's, it's hard to go to the pastors every time to ask them to give over and above what they give monthly. Yeah. But I'm thankful to the local pastors, yeah. especially the missionary churches who have stepped up, you know, to give yeah. us money to help us to bury an inmate mm-hmm. or their, their loved one. And so wow. it's been really hard to do that. But it's, it's beautiful to see the body of Christ yeah. step up. And see, those are the kind of uh, domino effect things of this ministry that most people don't even think about. Right. They think about, well, you're in the prison, you need a Bible. Yeah, I'll give you 30 bucks and call it a day. But... This is, this is a full life cycle ministry where right. you're ministering to these folks right. uh, through their entire um, criminogenic journey. Yeah? Right. So it's not just a Bible. Yeah. yeah. You're, you're seeing their whole lifestyle uh, problem, right? And like if they have an STD or they have AIDS and then they die, you know, to go from ministering to them while they're in prison and to bury them from AIDS, it's it's a whole roller coaster experience, yeah. right? And so it's hard yeah. to see that. And um, then you go back in the next day and then you see somebody and they're just being flippant about their drug use. Yeah. It's like, you just want to wring their necks. Yeah. You know, yeah. it's like, come on, stop. You just got to stop, you know, doing drugs. But they don't see it. You know, I remember, especially with Prison Fellowship, being the national program director, we, um, you know, devised and, and uh, instituted these in-prison programs right. to help lay a foundation. But the real work of prison ministry starts when they get released. Right. Aftercare. Yeah. The aftercare, the post-release. Mm-hmm. What What are some of the tangible needs on our island? You know, because like you said, we don't even have a resident drug treatment center. Right. So we, we get these folks, these 175, because this the nature of our facility, most of them are going to get released back in our community right and so from the chaplain's viewpoint what are some of the tangible practical needs for post-release 
on our island. Okay. So a lot of them will go to a state agency. A lot of them will go to a state agency and they will go and get social services through a state agency. Okay. But I would hate to see the churches end up being social service agencies. Mm -hmm. I would want to see the churches be the the storehouse ministries where they will take the inmate where they're at and and uh, really follow up with them so that they become uh, a member of the body of Christ, where the church becomes a place of nurturing and that the church would welcome them into the body and integrate them into the body so that the body of Christ will resource them, will help them with maybe taking them to the court appointments, will help them to write resumes, will help taking them to job interviews, will help taking them to uh, maybe possibly a probation um, uh, meeting will write letters of recommendation for them to their parole officer or to their probation um, court dates mm -hmm. so that they will become um, welcomed into their church family and that they will be planted and found you know faithful in the church because prison ministry is not the church right. prison ministry is a parachurch organization and we would like to see them really flow right into the churches the local churches mm -hmm. and so i keep telling inmates go to a local church tell the pastor i am a former inmate the chaplain, Chaplain Sui, told me to go to your church, introduce myself, tell you what my needs are, and that you will help me. And if the pastor says, I'm busy, come see me next week, go to another church, find another pastor who has the time to, to help you, and that will help you. And that's the pastor that you go to. And that's kind of my, my idea of what the, the churches should be doing, that they will welcome the inmate in and, and integrate them into the body. Because I believe that the body of Christ has the answer. It's Jesus. Right. And he, he heals all the manner of diseases. He, he, he welcomes the brokenhearted. He welcomes the outcast, and he integrates them. He loves them to salvation, and he loves them to redemption, and he brings them to a place where they're on solid ground. And that's where most of us need to be, if not all of us, right? Mm -hmm. So yeah. I, I believe that's what the church is for. So really, it's a community of care. Right. And, you know, it, it's overwhelming to think about one or two people trying to meet all those needs. Right. But if it's spread out over a church family. Right. And I think, you know, being on island now for nine years and, and you know, observing the ebb and flow I think that's our weak link right now mm -hmm. for our community and even our local church is uh, there's folks in our church with a heart uh, for prison ministry, a heart for the kids. And we'll talk about the kids ministry in a minute. And we need to take that next integrated intentional step right. of saying, you know, we need to provide and this is how I used to explain it uh, as a national program director of prison fellowship. Uh, we call it a community of care, and it, mm. it's a, a landing pad right. for inmates to come in. Right. And, you know, a lot of them, you know, the Bible so clearly says, in, like in 1 Corinthians 15, 33, don't be misled, bad company corrupts good character. Right. And you know all the criminogenic, you know, statistics that if you even have one relationship of somebody that's still in the criminogenic lifestyle you will behavior, go back. you're going to go back. Right. And so these folks... They're in a very fragile place. Right. And it's more than just saying, well, just trust Jesus. <laughs> yeah, trust Jesus and let us help you. Right. Because they're starting below ground zero. Right. So uh, I think that's a, a big area of prayer right. and a thing. But, you know, folks watching this, especially live on Kauai, you know, I want to encourage you to start praying. How can you be a part of a community of care? And this is the part about being the body. Right. Like some of those things you mentioned, like, you know, resume, uh, you know, interview skills, things like that. Um, there's some folks that maybe their skill set leans more toward that and they could help do that and be a valuable part of someone's life change forever. Exactly. Yeah. I think a lot of people that work in social service agencies during the day, their day job, I think they are perfect people to work in the church on their weekends because they can add expertise to the body of Christ. Oh, that's perfect. Yeah. Well, let's talk about the kids for a minute. You know, sure. uh, one thing that I used to talk about when I was with Prison Fellowship, it's a lot easier to move an acorn than an oak tree. Right. And, you know, it's good that we go into the prisons. Right. Some of these folks, their whole life has just been ingrained in that criminogenic thinking. Right. And, uh, we see miracles all the time. Right. And if we can go to these kids that are being raised in that environment, it's a lot easier to impact them and mm -hmm. have, um, you know, ministry toward them. So right. 
explain a couple of the opportunities for ministering to children. Okay, so every year at Christmas time we do Angel Tree, which is uh, where church members take a name of a child of an inmate and they buy a Christmas gift for the child and then they deliver it to the child's home on behalf of the parent who's incarcerated and they have a um, gift that's wrapped. They buy the gift and they wrap it and they have a card that they uh, the, ch uh, the parent says a personal note to the child saying, I love you, Merry Christmas from the father or mother in mm -hmm. prison. And they go and deliver it to the child and it gives the person from church an opportunity to be a witness to this family or to this child of the love of God um, in the form of an angel. And the angel is a messenger of God. And so they get to go and deliver this gift and they get no credit for it mm -hmm. because they are an angel. They're yeah. delivering the gift to this child on behalf of a parent, yeah. which the parent didn't buy it. The parent yeah. just asked for a free gift yeah. to be delivered to the child, which is so powerful. Wow. Children just be believe that the parent gave it to them and the children just light up the wow. children's eyes. I have children that are in prison now that are thanking me for delivering gifts to them 23 years ago. Wow. And so, I mean, they're like, Uncle Clayton, I remember you delivered a gift to me when I was a young baby. Wow. And um, I remember you coming to my house two or three times at least. And I remember Angel Tree. Thank you so much. Wow. And I said, well, why are you in jail now? Yeah, you know, that's that didn't work. You know, and they're like, they're laughing. And so, they, you know, we, we kind of go over stuff like that. And that's good. But Angel Tree is a very powerful thing. We, we serve millions of children every year yeah. nationwide. So that's a powerful program that uh, we do. Let's camp out on Angel Tree for a minute. We, how many uh, kids on average do we have on island every Christmas? Okay, so um, I, I don't know the, the total number because it changes every year, mm -hmm. but hopefully we will hit 200 this year. Okay, so okay. about 200 kids. Yeah. So if a, if a church isn't involved with that and they're interested, they should just go to the website. Prison Fellowship. They can go to prisonfellowship.org. Prison okay. right. And then what they can do is they can ask to be a, Angel Tree Church and the Prison Fellowship uh, Coordinator for Angel Tree will contact them okay. and then they will get them registered. Awesome. And then they'll start off with maybe a few names the first year and then they'll they'll integrate them and teach them how to do more and more. They might have to do uh, gifts by mail the first year to the mainland or something. And then after that, they can start to do more children on Kauai. Okay. Awesome. And as far as we know, with COVID and everything, we're still moving forward with Angel Tree one right. way or another. Right. Yeah. So it might be by mail okay. this year, but then we're still going to try to do that. And then we also do um, uh, camps, Angel okay. Tree camps. So next year we're going to shoot for um, Angel Tree Camp Kauai. Okay. And it's going to replace what we had called Camp Agape Kauai. So we're going to um, work on that. We're trying to help um, with uh, Angel Tree Camp Kauai to start shoot shoot an offshoot of camp and um, we're going to try to help children go to camp for free where they get four days of a life-changing experience to experience god in a way that is so life-changing that they will have the best four days of their life wow. life-changing the last few years we did that during fall break the first week of october right. Of course, we have COVID now, so okay, nobody, yeah, do. nobody's been. Is, able to is do. that our goal for next year, that same time frame? Or I'm not sure. Yeah, not it's kind of, yeah, it's kind of not really set yet. But okay, um, working with prison fellowship guys to figure that out. Right. Yeah. Okay. So, if if you had to just wrap up one thing right now that you wanted just to say to people that are watching, uh, from your heart, what what would that that little snippet message be i would like to say please um join us and be a monthly partner a monthly donor with us we we really need monthly donors that would invest in a local ministry that has been born out of a need here on Kauai 23 years ago um, we need people who would take ownership alongside of us because uh, we we do what we do with passion. We do it with empathy, and we would like to have partners that are with like-mindedness, um, that would do things out of obedience alongside of us and um, jump in. The water's nice and warm. You'll find that you you will find great stories. You when you come to our website, you will see lives that are changed, and um, you can ask questions. I'll answer your questions as much as I can. Um, you can call me. My phone number is on the on the website. My email's there. Any questions or any um, problems you have, you have friends that are coming to jail, you want to have some help with that, let me know. I'll be glad to awesome. um, answer your questions. What's that website address? It's kawaiiprisonministry.com. Awesome. Well, 
you know what? Why don't you close this in prayer? Okay. Well, Heavenly Father, I thank you, Lord, for um, all this time that we had to talk about uh, Kauai Prison Ministry and all that you're doing here on Kauai at Kauai Community Correctional Center. Lord, I just love that word, Kauai Community Correctional mm -hmm. Center, Lord. We just want to see the community of Kauai surround that jail and make a difference uh, in this um, situation that we see people in lord that yes maybe their choices brought them there lord but it's your will lord that all men would come to repentance mm -hmm. so we thank you lord that um you're going to use whatever circumstances that they brought themselves to that um, you would bring them to repentance through that uh, circumstances lord and so we just pray god that you would show them the way out of their sins and that is um, to come to your throne of grace, Lord. And so we ask you for your grace and your mercy to o overrule all of their sin, Lord. And we just ask you right now, Lord, that you would continue to show mercy and mercy and mercy over what the devil has meant to bring them down, Lord, that you would lift them up, lift up the those people that are just feeling downtrodden and beaten by their own sin and by the devil's lies, Lord. Would you bring truth? and dignity back to these lives, Lord. And for those of us who are struggling with um, what people have hurt them, Lord, maybe people have um, stolen from them or people have hurt their family members, Lord, I pray that there would be great forgiveness, mm. great understanding and forgiveness for those who have sinned against us, Lord. Help us not to hold the bitterness or resentment towards these folks, Lord. And help us to remember that you forgave us of all of our sins, Lord. And therefore, we should forgive those who have sinned against us. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Lord, for doing that. Thank you for dying on the cross for us, Lord. Help us to remember that as we go forth. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. And if you want to give through Kalaheo Mission, if you're part of our family and you want to do that, you can go to our website, kalaheomissionary.com, hit the Give portal, look for Prison Ministry. You can give that way. 100% of that will go to Clayton Guys. But I suggest just cut out the middleman. Go right to their website and uh, give. And I just pray that you would give generously. Aloha.
Turned it for good. 